people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. In what is being referred as country's biggest achievement till date since the pandemic outbreak, India is inoculating around 6 million people every day now. Since the launch of the new phase when country jabbed nearly 9 million people on day one, India's vaccination drive has picked a fresh momentum and has been able to stabilize the situation against a rapidly mutating coronavirus. Nearly 9 million people were inoculated with COVID-19 jabs as India kicked off its free inoculation drive for all adults on 21st June. The share of doses, the government said, has risen sharply in the rural areas as the drive represented a record two-fold jump. The government has also changed the reservation protocol to get a slot for vaccination. It will not just be online anymore and walk-in centres have also been opened across the country to ramp up the pace of the drive. On June 21st, Bharat has achieved a historic milestone. In the whole day, there were 88,000,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses administered. This comes after the federal government reversed a policy for individual states and hospitals to buy vaccines for those aged 18 to 44. Earlier this month, Prime Minister Modi had said that the federal government will be providing free vaccines to all in the category of 18 to 44. 21 June Somvar se. देश के हर राज्य में 18 वर्ष से ऊपर की उम्र के सभी नागरिकों के लिए भारत सरकार राज्यों को मुफ्त वैक्सीन मुहैया कराएगी। Meanwhile, the recreation facilities and markets have received a further relaxation with the drop in the daily infection rate. From the first week of May, when the country recorded over 400,000 cases for successive days, the weekly caseload of the country has come down to 50,000. However, a fresh variant, the Delta variant, which has further mutated to Delta Plus, has sent a word of caution to the government and it has been declared a variant of concern in the country. Although the current number of cases of Delta Plus variant is in few dozens, the situation could grow out of hands in few weeks, the government has warned. Experts opine if India doesn't want to re-witness the havoc it saw in April and May during the peak of the second wave, it must impose a strict COVID-compliant environment. Vaccination, they say, continues to remain the most effective weapon in prevention and against spread of the disease. Moving on. The Baloch National Movement held protests in the United Kingdom highlighting human rights violations and Pakistan's inhuman state policy of enforced disappearances. The supporters of the pro-freedom party raised concern over rising cases of extrajudicial killings and abductions of Baloch people and urged the international community to intervene. Baloch say their territory has been illegally occupied by Pakistan and they have been demanding freedom from its clutches ever since it was formed. The Baloch National Movement UK staged a protest in London over the past weekend 
against the targeting of families of political and social activists in Balochistan by the Pakistan Army and intelligence agencies. They gathered in front of British Prime Minister's residence in London to highlight the rising cases of enforced disappearances in Balochistan and 12 years of the enforced disappearance of activist Dr. Deen Mohammad Baloch. They demanded the immediate withdrawal of the occupying forces from the region while urging the international community to intervene. I was there, I was working under his leadership and all of a sudden a news broke. Deen Mohammed Baloch has been abducted. He was taken away from his hospital. He was performing his medical duty when the fascist army of Pakistan broke out and they pick him up. And since then, no one has heard a single word about him. Similarly, Zakir Majid Baloch, a student leader, he is missing for 12 long years. Ramzan Baloch, another member of Baloch National Movement, missing for over a decade. Ghafoor Baloch, missing for the same time period. And then this policy of kill and dump or the abduction and forced disappearances did not stop. Pakistan's dubious designs of cracking down on Baloch dissent, or for that matter, any dissent involves arresting activists on trumped-up charges and subjecting them to inhuman torture in detention centers. They are imprisoned in Kaminikado for an indefinite period of time. On most occasions, they never return home. There have been over 50,000 cases of disappearances in Balochistan so far. The barbarity has only gained strength with time as the establishment-backed goons attack innocents with impunity. Sindhis too, who have been enduring the state atrocities, joined in the demonstration in solidarity and urged Pakistan Authority to immediately release activists who have been abducted. ये जो हरासमेंट की पॉलिसी है ये जो डिसएपियरेंस की पॉलिसी है पाकिस्तानी रियासत की तरफ से ये बलोचों के खिलाफ एक सोची समझी साजिश है इन्होंने कंप्लीट जो सेनर एलिमेंट्स हैं पढ़े लिखे जो बलोच हैं जो उनके ब्रेन्स हैं उनको उन्होंने डिसएपियर किया है और डॉक्टरों को दीन मोहम्मद के हवाले से जो ये आज का प्रोग्राम है उसको 12 साल हो गए हैं और अभी तक जो है वो लापता है और हजारों के तैदाद में जो है लोग जो है वो डिसएपियर होते हैं और म्यूटिलेटेड उनकी बॉडीज फेंकी जाती हैं Islamabad's modus operandi has been to muzzle the voice of dissent permanently. It never pursued a legal or democratic process in any case to counter what the dissenters said. While some say the country's leadership has been baffled by an everyday decline in its reputation owing to exposures done by the activists, others believe that it is China that is controlling and directing Pakistan's actions. It doesn't want to see a politically unstable Pakistan where it is investing over $65 billion. Moving on. A month after Singapore-based cargo ship Express Pearl caught fire off Sri Lankan coast and sank off, a multi-layered investigation has been launched to determine the exact amount of damages caused by around 1,500 burnt containers and tons of nitric acid that the ship was laden with. Recently, experts from the United Nations Environment Program met with country's officials and visited coastal areas to take stock of the situation. A growing number of animal carcasses at shores have only compounded the fares of a massive oil leak. Carcasses of marine animals, an expanding heap of non-biodegradable plastic, and other harmful substances off Sri Lankan coastline near the place where the Express Pearl shipwreck had drowned a few weeks back has left the government and the observers worried. While an official confirmation is still awaited, experts who have already called this incident the biggest man-made environmental disaster are assuming it to be a clear case of an oil spill. 
Experts from the United Nations Environment Programme recently travelled to the site and met Sri Lankan authorities. While the government of Sri Lanka has already assigned the Ministry of Wildlife the task of evaluating a large number of deceased turtle in the vicinity, the UN team said the large portion of the chemicals present at the ship was burned and didn't spill into water. As of Friday, over a hundred turtle carcasses have been found with many bearing signs of throat and shell damage. A topsy of over one dozen dolphins is also underway. The nation's Ministry of Justice is conducting a separate investigation into the circumstances of the sinking and it has set up five subcommittees to follow the threads, one each for questions of insurance, fisheries, environment, economy and legal matters. It has already filed an initial claim for $40 million against Express Pearl's owner for the initial firefighting response, not including damages related to the sinking or the pollution that followed. container <laughs> Plastic pabalu, you can plastic uh polythene when they will say the Musada Amudra Vashim Bavitakarna. When a meva Visal Pramanyak, Godabimata Gosaga Gasaganava. Make a own kinoa loki metek sid the which uh visalatama plastic up at the view, or let a good three was tau kilometer per even is the latine tavaval de Katuna Villa Tibunat, Metra Visal Pramanyak, Muda de Katula Nainsa, the Punji Lankavata, Barapatala Tigratamai, Muda then the Villa Tivini. Make container as a suha thing, a cotasak giniga nedati, cotasak muda de visu nedati, the cotasak muda at a temper pity venati, cotasatamai, then we're let a gasagan, a villa tivini. Ungi matea no ungidino, some man in Virleta Gasagan Abu Romani theatre, Hatalia Pamano and the ticket. The incident has not just affected the marine ecosystem but has severely impacted the livelihood of thousands of Sri Lankan fishermen. Fishing activity in an 80 km long stretch has been banned, fearing contamination due to toxins and floating pellets in water. About 7,700 fishing families lost income as a result of this shutdown. Two fishermen have filed a petition with Sri Lanka's Supreme Court to ask for compensation for all of the fishing communities. They have demanded $2,500 per family under Sri Lanka's fundamental rights law. However, they have no timeline as to when they will get compensation, if they get any at all, and when they will be able to resume their fishing activities. And now in our section of Asia this week, the stories from across the continent that made news this week. The New York Times has reported that four Saudis who participated in the 2018 killing of the Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi received paramilitary training in the United States the previous year under a contract approved by the State Department. It says the State Department in 2017 issued a paramilitary training contract to the private equity firm Cerberus. Last year, while being vetted by the Trump White House for a senior Pentagon job, Cerberus senior executive Louis Bremer confirmed in writing that his company trained four members of the Khashoggi kill team. The Times reported Bremer's admission never made it to Congress because his nomination was withdrawn. Khashoggi was an opinion columnist for the Washington Post. He was killed and dismembered by Saudi operatives 
linked to the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Qatari Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa bin Abdulaziz Al Thani has said that his country will only allow people fully vaccinated against COVID-19 to attend next year's World Cup and is in talks to secure 1 million doses in case global immunization efforts lag. The Gulf Arab state will host the four-week tournament in November 2022 and the president of global soccer body FIFA has said the matches would be held in full stadiums. It was not immediately clear how those vaccines would be offered. Most coronavirus vaccines require two doses administered weeks apart. Qatari officials had earlier said they hoped to hold a coronavirus free tournament and planned to make vaccinations available to attendees not already immunized. Qatar is inoculating its citizens and residents with Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna vaccines. It has administered at least 2.8 million doses, enough to vaccinate about 50.8% of its population. Theme park Gundam Factory Yokohama, featuring Japan's leading robot animation character Gundam, was opened last December near Yamashita Park in Japan's second most popular city, Yokohama. The 18-meter-tall Gundam move attracts the most number of visitors. Gundam, now a Japanese animation robot hero, is known not only in Japan, but also around the world through plastic model and anime screening. The name of this Gundam is Gundam RX-78F00. It is assumed that Gundam was found in Yokohama city in pieces such as hand and feet and was repaired to move again. On observation deck, special photo of the beautiful scenery of Yokohama city and Gundam are very unique. え、動くえ、RX78ガンダムをですね、ぜひ皆さんにまずは見ていただきたいと思ってます。で、その上でやはりガンダムというのは、え、ま、世界の人々にま、勇気を与えるような存在であってほしいなと、え、以前から思ってお
Moving on. The Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh's Cox's Bazar are struck by the double whammy of COVID lockdown and the military coup in Myanmar, the country they call their home. While their squalid shelters have been squeezed further by the restrictions imposed in the wake of the fresh infection wave, their dream of returning back has received a fresh hit with military junta taking over the country's reins. The Rohingya mystery in the camps of Cox's Bazar is only worsening by the day. As if the homelessness and poverty were not enough, the pandemic spread since last year seems to have blocked even the little chances of their repatriation. The refugee camps are under lockdown to mitigate the spread of coronavirus. However, the refugees in the world's largest settlement feel that the pandemic is diminishing international concern over their situation. A military takeover in Myanmar, they say, has only added to their miseries and they have left with nothing to look forward to in life. Jamaleda, a refugee, says she couldn't even observe the refugee day in solidarity with her fellow refugees as the situation has only grown grimmer. This year on World Refugee Day, UNHCR, the United Nations Body for Refugees, in its annual report said the number of refugees was growing across the world. The total number of refugees across the world was 82.4 million at the end of 2020 and over 1 million were Rohingya only. The political situation in Myanmar was also not helping and now the Burmese were as unhappy as the Rohingyas due to the military takeover in February, they said. Bangladesh is keen to see the Rohingyas go back to Myanmar, but there has been little sign of progress in talks with Myanmar's military junta. Some Rohingya even say that they have endured so much that life seems graveyard to them. While Rohingya call Myanmar their home, they have been widely referred to as Bengali by Myanmar authorities, implying they are outsiders from Bangladesh. Nearly a million of them were forced to flee the country after a militant attack on security posts prompted a severe response from the government in 2017. Several repatriation efforts were made in the past from both sides, but none could materialize owing to one reason or the other. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन